Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. Do you know what a safety capacitor is? If not, then this video is for you. That's because if you're into electronics design and repair, you should really know what they are and how to properly replace them or apply them if you're designing something. Well, if you ever try to fix an amplifier or maybe a switch mode power supply, you probably noticed that there are some capacitors between live and neutral or between live and ground or neutral to ground. One such example would be right here. This is a capacitor that goes between live and neutral. Let's have a quick look at the schematic as well. So for reference, this is a Sansui G5700 amplifier and as you can see, power comes in here, let's say this is neutral, and it goes straight to a capacitor, which is C102 or something like that. And then the live goes through the switch, and then it goes through the fuse, and then it comes back right here to the other terminal of this capacitor. So basically, after the switch and the fuse, this capacitor is right between live and neutral. And this is the sort of capacitor that I'm talking about. I found a really nice article on DigiKey on this topic and to sum things up, what you should know is that any capacitor that goes between live and neutral or between neutral and ground and live to ground is not your average film capacitor. However, there are some special capacitors called safety capacitors. Let's see what makes them safety capacitors basically. So let's take the this capacitor for example this is an x class safety capacitor and that's because it goes across mains basically so um, this means that um, the way this capacitor fails matters in in such case these capacitors can see um, really high voltage across them so they are rated on certain peak voltages, let's say. For example, a class X1 capacitor is rated up to four kilovolts, as you can see here. So um, the special thing about these capacitors is that they have a predefined failure mode, which is not exactly typical for film capacitors. So any X class capacitor is supposed to fail short circuited. And this is really important because um, such capacitor and needs to have a fuse before it and in case it sees a larger than the rated voltage it will fail short circuited and this will maybe protect the, um, the rest of the circuit at the expense of the capacitor and the fuse of course so this is why it is better to use a proper capacitor for such an application however even more critical is um, the type of capacitors that you use for the other position in the circuit, which is right here between live and um, ground or neutral to ground. And that's because um, the short circuit between um, these two points, um, in case of a failure of a capacitor, could lead to electrocution. That's because you could have a mains voltage go to, to the case of uh, whatever appliance this thing is in. So this is really, really, really dangerous. And that's why uh, why rated uh, safety capacitors fail open circuit all the time, because um, it would be very dangerous for them to fail short circuited. So that's why um, the type of capacitor that you use in such an application really matters. And Remember that for a random film capacitor, the failure mode is not guaranteed most of the time. And once again, for Y-class capacitors, there are various subclasses uh, depending on the rated voltage. In case you are wondering why these capacitors are here, well, they are here for what we call EMI compliance or electromagnetic interference compliance. So what, um, what this means is that um, even if we like to think of the mains voltage as a perfect clean sine wave and so on, it is actually far from perfect and it can have lots and lots and lots of noise due to the way all the things that are connected to, to the mains voltage operate. And not only the mains are uh, noisy, but um, 
The appliances that we use on mains voltage are also noisy. So what we do with these filters is basically we try to attenuate external noise from getting into our circuits and maybe changing its functionality. And we also try to avoid injecting um, noise from our appliances into the mains. So this is why such a filter is for. And if you try to to get into more details, we basically have two types of noise that could appear. First of all, we have differential mode noise, which looks something like this. So let's say as the neutral goes down, the live goes up. So they are out of phase, meaning differential. And for such cases, we have the class X safety capacitor to, to take care of this. So what happens here is that the class X uh, safety capacitor is basically so small that it is, uh, let's say, invisible for 50 Hertz. However, as soon as we have some high frequency noise here, the, the class X safety capacitor takes care of that because at high frequency, this one looks like uh, dead short or in theory, that's what it is supposed to do. And we also have common mode noise, meaning that it applies to both live and neutral in exactly the same way. And for this, we have a common mode choke, which is not the topic of this video. And then we have some Y class uh, safety capacitors for this. So as you can see, this is common mode. So both live and neutral go, let's say up um, at the same time. And these are shunted to ground by the class Y capacitors. So in theory, the filter as a whole could take care of differential mode noise and common mode noise as well. And if you want a real life example, maybe you've played with some uh, old radios and you notice that especially on distant AM stations, as soon as uh, somebody would turn the lights on and off, you would hear a pop in the speakers. Well, that's where we get into EMI issues and that's where such filters could help, basically. And of course, I wouldn't end this video without showing you the actual safety capacitors and how to differentiate them from your average Joe film capacitor. So, um, first of all, this is an average film capacitor because there are no uh, special writings on it. And this is what the safety capacitor looks like. So it looks pretty much the same, except that you can see the safety class written on it. So this one is an X1 safety capacitor. So as you can see, they are pretty similar. They have the same value, but in certain applications, you really have to use this one, as I explained earlier. So it wouldn't be the right thing to do to to use such a capacitor in um, EMI filter. You really need to use this one. And here we have a class Y safety capacitor. Once again, the safety class is written right here on the case. It says Y1. So yeah, I hope you learned something new in this video. And also I will leave you some really interesting resources in the description of this video. For example, if you want to know how these capacitors fail, what the failure modes look like and how you can make the capacitor fail one more one mode or another, there is a really nice video on EV blog about this one. And also you will find the DigiKey article in the description of this video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. That's it for now. Bye.